The conversation on financial regulation continues. At the center of the discussion is the plans created by Senator Corker and Warner. And this isn't the first time the two have come across the aisle to collaborate on policy. Here now with more Senator Mark Warner, member of the Budget and Banking Committees, and Senator Bob Corker, member of the Banking Committee. Gentlemen, good to see you both. I want to read you something from a few, actually a couple weeks ago. They say it looks like uh, financial regulatory reform is getting back on track now that free market thinking senators who actually have real world business experience and they name you two have agreed to work with Dodd. Uh, are things moving along pretty well, sir? Well, I think things are moving along. I think uh, Senator Corker and I are both relatively new guys in the Senate, and we had this uh, weird sense that we got hired to actually get stuff done. That doesn't mean sacrifice your principles, but it does mean if you can find common ground, you know, that's a good place to build policy. Was there blowback at first when you agreed to, to do this? No. You know, we've been working together for a year. We've had bipartisan meetings with uh, everybody from Alan Greenspan to Alice Rivlin to, to whatever, bringing them in to talk with us, so not at all. It's worked very well and, and uh, Mark's a great partner. So all right, walk us through, give us a report card. Where, to the degree you can, where are discussions and where are the hiccups, where, where the, where's, the, where's the low hanging fruit? Well listen, I think, first of all, Bob was too generous on that comment. He took some arrows. I mean, you know, we both took some arrows, but he particularly did. He stepped up and said, you know, regardless, even if some of the larger negotiations had broken down, he still wanted to see if we could get a good bill without sacrificing principle. And, uh, you know, he's been a, a great partner through this. I think what, we, what we've what both decided is, as business guys, we both said, you know, the American taxpayer should never again have to hear the term too big to fail or ever have a process where we, as taxpayers, are put at risk to shore up financial financial institutions. We need to make sure that if there's going to be a resolution process that it's so painful that any rational management team is going to want to go through a normal bankruptcy process rather than counting on somehow the taxpayer to prop them up. So yeah. resolution authority is making some headway. Oh, there's no question. Mark and I uh, shook hands two days ago, and it's being put into legislative language now. It's both the systemic risk piece, but also resolution. And look, I, I, I said this earlier, but a couple of weeks ago, one of the best news I saw was one of the credit rating agencies was actually downgrading possibly two of the larger institutions because they thought we might actually put something like this into law, which is outstanding. I mean, what you want is market discipline. Yep. You want those people who are investing or loaning to know that there's a possibility that a large institution, an institution that's maybe too large to manage properly, could actually fail in this country. That's a great step away from where we've been. So where will, where will the authority lie? How will well, it be structured? I think there will be a time and place to lay out all the details. This is a as much, great time as and much place. as I'd like to <laughs> would like to break this news this morning. Yeah. This is just one piece of a of a bigger bill. Um, but I, I can tell you this much: uh, you know, I think that both the market will react favorably to what we've seen. I think we've put appropriate protections in place. I think we've recognized that we don't want people out there roving, roving regulators, that we've got to have a, a, a order predict, orderly predictability. I think the financial markets are more than anything looking for some predictability in terms of the new rules. We're going to give them that. Mm -hmm. Is this true the White House no longer insisting on a separate CFPA? <laughs> Does that help? Things, you know, does that move things along? We, uh, we met last night. Um, Look, I, I think the best thing to do is to get this done. Uh, I think the, the and we're not industry, helping. <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all are helping. You always help. It's great being on here. But I, I think uh, you know we've sort of agreed that let's get all the policy issues worked out. If we let pieces of it come out uh, one at a time, what happens is it just attracts a lot of arrows. I think both of us and all those working on this, Chris Dodd and others, we want to get something done. And the best way to do it is to finish up our negotiations, get it into print, let the world see it, let us take the arrows that come at that point in time. Although I think we're going to get to a place that is a very good bill. I still am very optimistic about that. We're going to be working through the weekend to get that done. And I think it's So uh, you think it's an one. event for next week, perhaps? Um, look, I don't want to, I'd, I'd rather Dodd lay out timelines. Uh, let's put it this way. Mark and I uh, met our deadline. I think that we're going to, uh, I think that through the weekend our staffs uh, are going to be working with Dodd to, to meet some deadlines on some other issues and, and uh, we'll see. I mean, the, you know, when you, when you start putting concepts into legislative language. Obviously, just like in any major deal, you get the legalese involved. You have to uh, sort of work through some things. But things are going very well. 
And I think the financial industry, I know Mark knows this well. I mean, gosh, he sounds like a Republican. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to adopt this guy. Uh, but I think that the market responds to predictability. And I think right now, some of the more major institutions in our country don't know what the rules of the road are. We need those rules of the road to move on. I think that's affecting our economy. Let's get it done. Let's do it the right way. And, right. uh, and move on to something else. At the else. same time, we've got to recognize we're 18 months after the failure of AIG and Lehman. And I think, again, back where we started, we both said, it's our job. We got hired to get some of these things fixed, not just the markets, but for that matter, the American public wants to know that sure. we put new rules of the road so financial industry can continue, but we realize we're never going to have to see again what we saw in 2008. Beck? Uh, Senator Corker, you just brought up a point about how you think this may be, uh, the, this lack of any clarity is slowing things down. John Mack, the chairman of Morgan Stanley, made comments last night in North Carolina, said the same thing. This is moving way too slow right. um, and that they need some sort of clarity. Obviously, you're on the same page with that, but do you think some of your your other senators, your, your Republican colleagues would come on board when you start hearing voices from industry saying the same thing? Look, I had a meeting with uh, all of the Republican senators on the banking committee yesterday, and, and it went well. And I think all of us just want to, to get the right thing done, something that doesn't create some sweeping new powers on the consumer side that undermine the safety and soundness piece. But, uh, you know, Chris, Chris Dodd and I were in Central America last week. I think you know that. Our staffs have been working closely together. Warner staff's been working. I think we're going to get to a place soon. Uh, on a bill that will stand the test of time. And, and I think there are going to be lots of Republicans who come on board. I had a very good meeting yesterday with Senator Shelby, actually two of them. Um, I think things are beginning to percolate in a very, very good way, and hopefully we'll get this behind I us. I want to get a quick question in, Bob, to uh, Senator to, to Senator Warner, uh, who, who, who sounded briefly like a Republican. I want to uh, squash <laughs> that quickly. Uh, uh, you think... Uh, you mean the fact that I can read a balance sheet? Is that, <laughs> I actually think that I think we could use a few more folks on both sides of the aisle. Oh, How about this? Uh, are you for? Uh, uh, you, you think that reconciliation should be used in health care? Listen, let's try to not prejudge what's going to happen today. Oh, come I wish. On. Hold on, hold on. Hit me out. I do. I do wish that maybe we might have had some new members, not just the same old faces at this session, because I think as we've seen in this example, well, yes some of the new, no? some of the new guys could actually maybe find some common ground. That, so that's a that's a, a yes. We should use reconciliation, or no, we should. That's as you know. I, if I remember right, Medicare drug benefit back in 2003, reconciliation was used. But I sure as heck would hope we find some common ground on health care. Okay. Right. You are good. You're good. You're, yeah, that's, why he's with, that's why he's there. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, that shows you why health care is in the weeds, and these guys are almost to the end zone. Uh, um, one, any concerns about it moving back to the House and whether Chairman Frank would have issues? Listen, I, I think that um, uh, I've had some conversation with Chairman Frank. You know, there's going to be some hot button issues like consumer protection. I don't, we, we should not, we should look at the end of the day how we better protect consumers. And we should not let this this issue become the public option hot button the way uh, it was that became in the health care mm -hmm. debate. And uh, I think there's a reasonable way to uh, ensure both enhanced consumer protection at the same time, making sure that there's an appropriate balance with safety and soundness. And has there been something about the process here that's different than health care? I mean, we're getting glimpses of bipartisanship what? on jobs, on this. I'm just wondering why. I mean, it, well, I got to give again. Uh, this kind of back and forth here, mutual admiration society, but we both decided that one, there was a lot we didn't know. We both had business experience, but getting into the complexities of the financial system, and I think we both also recognize, man, we messed this up. The unforeseen consequences, not just for the financial markets domestically, but for worldwide, uh, this was too important to screw up. So uh, we were willing to just kind of go at it for a year and, and uh, do our homework and I think find some common ground. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be now, watching. And we're, and we're not there yet. And in five minutes, uh, something could happen, may have happened while we're on this program. But I'm very optimistic that, uh, that we can get it done. And just as John Mack said, and other people certainly uh, that we're talking to are saying, let's, let's get this, uh, let's, let's let the rules of the road be known. Let's do it in a way that doesn't do damage, but, but strengthens. And I think we have, uh, look, Chris Dodd has been a great partner in this. I got to tell you, uh, yeah. I very much enjoyed working with him and his staff. I think we're going to get there. Uh, you got the whole street watching. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on.